All righty. Welcome, 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 everybody, to tonight's call. Um, once again, we are continuing to do a convention recap um, for some of the workshops that some were able to attend and also for those who were not able to attend. Um, so tonight's topic, Jennifer, you might have to help me so that I say this right, but I believe it was facts tell, stories sell, right? The importance yes. of crafting your story. Jen, uh, now who taught that class? Jen Hunter? Heather Brock. It was, okay. It was, um, yeah, Heather Brock. Okay. So, Jen, I'll let you take it away. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience with that class and just something and what you wanted to share with everyone, uh, not only on the call, but those watching the replay. Um, yeah, so that was like one of my favorite classes. She was just really encouraging and um, she was actually really funny. Like, did you, I don't know, did you guys go to her class too? Because yeah, she, she made us laugh. Um, it was my husband's first convention too, and he really liked her class as well. Um, yeah, she just made it really funny and engaging, and she talked about having a story, and it kind of made me realize I don't have a very good story, so I have um, some things to work on. Um, I have notes, and um, I wanted to do this one because I really liked it, but then Part of why I don't like telling like my story or my things is because I don't like to hear myself talk. So I was trying to get my husband to be on hit this call with me, but um, he won't. So you guys are stuck with me. So we're blessed with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. So. Um, well, why don't you start with some of the highlights? So, so for those who didn't get a chance to go to that workshop or to go to convention period, um, like what were some of the highlights? of the importance of crafting your story? Well, she um, brought it back to like, she was talking about how um, even the Bible has parables and stories, which we all are really aware of that. Um, she said the most important story we tell is the one we ever tell is the one we tell ourselves. Um, she had a lot of little um, like slides she would put up. And one of the first slides she did was um, anytime you're telling a story, uh, the questions people are asking, they're asking, is that true? And then the second thing they ask is, could it be true for me? And um, she talked about being a professional storyteller, not um, not amateur. She quoted um, Jim Ron, uh, Ron, 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 I don't know how you say that, um, Ron. Yeah, 20% of what you know, but it's 80% of how you feel about what you know. And she gave some... She gave some rules of engagement. She talked about um, truth, passion, and timing. And she said, for most of us, truth isn't hard because we're always telling the truth and we're passionate about what we believe. But she said the timing is something that all of us can work on. And so she um, elaborated more on that. Um, let's see. One note I wrote was, um, about for us with oils, she says they buy you before they'll buy oils. So about the importance of us and our, how we um, are genuine. Uh, she talked a lot about ups and downs, a story having ups and downs. You wanna bring them along. Um, they connect with joy and pain. So like telling them, um, finding out their pain and, and make, you know, making that fester a little bit, making them feel that, but then offering the solution and then that joy bringing them in. Um, I actually, I actually was trying to watch it again today to, um, refresh my memory. I watched so, part of it. Yesterday. So really quickly, um, so let's, let's go back a little bit, Jen. So you okay. mentioned timing. Um, mm -hmm. what, it, what was it that she spoke about that was so important about the timing with your, um, story? Was that the, oh, okay. the 32, so the next seven? So she, um, yeah, 32, seven. Yeah. So that was the next thing was her formulas was her formula. So she, there was, um, the history, which, um, she brought out that we do, you don't want to dwell too much on your history. Like she brought out that she was, um, homeschooled, never went to school, never been vaccinated, um, started reading like books at tw age 12. And then she was like talking about how that, then your audience is like, Oh, I can never do that. Like you want to connect with people. So like she said, brought up just saying you're a mom. And um, 
and then the pro uh so the first one was history the second one was, was a problem and then a turning point and then casting the vision and then that's when she got into about um your timing like how much time you have with someone so 30 seconds was just the nuts and bolts um two minutes was keeping it simple and then she said like five to 10 minutes if you're like sitting down for a class, like those people want to be closed and they want, and then you have that time to talk about it. She, her, so her average for that was like seven minutes going deeper into explanation for things. I'm looking at my notes. Okay. So, so while you're, I, I just, um, I want to add to that a little bit because okay. I didn't get a chance to watch that today. Um, I did not go to that workshop when we were at convention. Um, but one thing that she mentioned that was pretty interesting was with the, the whole 30 second nuts and bolts, two minutes. Uh, I can't remember what she um, titled the, your two minute story as, um, and then the seven minutes going deep, but the application. So do you remember where she said you would use something like a 30 second story? That was like a really quick, like in line. And then I want to say the two minutes was for her example. She gave like a soccer mom having a little bit more time with that. And then I, I believe the seven minute or if you have five to 10 minutes is a professional setting, right? So mm -hmm. where people yeah. are a little bit more patient, they want to listen to your story. They've come to listen to your story and, and see you as the authority. So therefore they're willing to sit and listen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So overall, like, what would you say is the benefit? Like, what knowledge did you walk away with from that class that you didn't have before that you were looking to put into action? Um, I need to work on my my story more and having um, being more confident in it and more. Um, yeah, just just that I need to be better about communicating. And well, as you can see right here, that I still need to work on it. So, but yeah, she was just so engaging and like, yeah, I really liked her a lot. Yeah, I, I thought, um, thank, thank you for sharing that, Jen. Was there anything else you wanted to, to uh, share? And so we're gonna, in a minute, open up the uh, call to other individuals who got a chance to watch, but I just wanna make sure I, I don't cut you short. No, no, you're fine. I um, that was about where I stopped watching it again, and then when she went into her story, and then I did write a couple other notes about. Well, she was, yeah, her story was really amazing. Um, I one thing I really liked about her story was how she um, she was a no for so long, and I mean, look at her now and how, what she went through, and even um, yeah, her story about her dad. And how much the oils helped him and it still didn't it still took her like i think four more years before she got involved so just just it was really encouraging yeah i, I caught bits and pieces of her story um I, I do agree her her story is is very interesting and and one thing i appreciated about her is um as she was telling her story she didn't say that she was anything you know like miraculous or special like that most people are pretty much the same, you know, they're very similar. Um, and so I really, from listening to her speak and from listening to her class, like one of the takeaways was like, sometimes we get caught up in trying to make sure that our story is so compliant that we, we don't really give the meat of the story, like that will actually, you know, touch or move somebody to action. And so, I thought it was really interesting because number one, she mentioned like presenting your story in a professional manner. Like you're, you are a professional, like whether it's your first time teaching a class or getting up in front of people or talking to someone, they don't know it's your first time. Right. So either way, when you're telling your story, like be professional about it. So like when I thought about that and I know me and my personality, like I'm the ha ha, like I'm going to tell you how it is. Like, people are going to laugh if it's funny, but it may not necessarily always be professional. Um, and so as you continue to hone further skills within this business, like what, that's one of the skills I have in developing a professionalism about your story when you tell it. But uh, Jen, you also touched on, you know, some of the, uh, the good points about making sure that you're, 
your story is kind of told like how does she phrase it about like the story sentence or how every story has to have a subject you know what i'm talking about um yeah are you talking about like the formula where it went from like um like there was a history like you started with your history and then there was a problem there was a turning point and then cash casting the vision like where you were going from there right i feel like my nose is running um right. but yeah she was just and i i really liked with that history part where she um sometimes we get so caught up in like uh, like we feel like we have to know enough and we have to be an expert on something but whereas she brought out like just being um passionate about it and like um sharing your story and connecting with people that you don't have to be the expert because sometimes then the other people like she had a person um come to her and say oh i went to another class and it was really good um it was a really good or she, they really liked it. And she was like, Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Everybody's different. And then she said, she said, well, it made me feel like I could do it. And like how that hurt, that hurt her heart, but it made her realize how, you know, um, having it be duplicatable, I guess, and not, um, being the ex so much of an expert sometimes that you're just quoting all these facts and figures and things that people can't follow or don't feel like they can measure up to that. Yeah. And, and then the other thing it made me think about is, you know, typically we gravitate towards people who are like us, you know, in some way, shape or form. So like when we're crafting our, our story and we're dealing with, you know, um, the history, the problem, the turning point and the solution, like people are listening to your story to see like, hey, do I see a little bit of my circumstances within that person or within their story? And once they find something that they resonate with or that clicks with them, like not saying that like they're in and you got them but they're definitely honing in on that, right? You know, they're, they're definitely starting to pay attention and say, hey, this person, you know, they were just like, like how I am now, you know, and the fact that this is where they are now, like that's where I wanna be. And a lot of times that will do a lot um, for not only establishing you as, a, as, as an authority, but also um, like you touched on telling truth, right? So people wanna know like, does this work? And uh, what was the other thing you said, Jen? Will this work for me? Right. Um, that was like the questions at the beginning is they want to know if it's true and then they want to know if it's true for me. Like, will something work for me? And that was kind of the part where she brought about Jim Rohn's quote where it was 20% um, what you know, but 80% about how you feel about what you know. So, so I think that message is actually pretty powerful because if you think about it, unless you're a green personality like the two of us, like really facts don't really appeal to a, a ton of people you know so a lot of people generally care they they make their decisions based on how they feel right and so if they feel that they're not being misled that your story is, is first of all true and then they also resonate with parts of your story that they're able to look at their life and say okay this person is kind of like me then now now they're invested right the the facts only help to solidify for a certain amount or a certain type of, of individual. But those stories are really what draw people in. Um, so I, I just thought that was really, really powerful from her presentation. Um, so, so Jen, I know I asked this question already. Um, any last thoughts that you want to leave individuals with on like why that class was so instrumental for you? Like, like if I were going to convention next year and that class was offered again, why would I tell somebody to take it? I just think it was really, she just made it really exciting and encouraging and like something that I totally have to work on. Like I said, I don't feel like I speak well enough or know enough. And, but she, um, yeah, she was really awesome. And just, um, like I said, Jared even really liked it because it was both of our first convention and she was probably our favorite speaker, her. And then, um, the other one that I said I would do, I would do. But um, yeah, she, she just was so encouraging and how important it is really too. So it's something I really need to work on. Okay. Well, well, I thank like you it. For, uh, I like it a lot. I'm glad you liked it. And, and as your first time going to convention, you know, it, it's, it's, it's exciting, you know, like for, I'm sure everybody's heard our story like numerous times, but even though like I wasn't excited about going to convention when I got there and the training that, I got from some of the classes and just interacting with the, the positive energy and the people like it is exciting, you know, so I'm glad yeah. that you know it that. Yeah, it was really exciting. What's that? It was a lot more exhausting. 
it was really exciting. It was a lot more exhausting than I had anticipated, but, um, yeah. and it's so hard to do everything. Like I wanted to do everything, but it's hard. Yeah. So this kind of nice with the digital ticket. I want to go back there some more. I want to catch, but yeah, it's, it's well worth it. And for those who don't know, um, if you bought a ticket to convention and you came to convention, you actually did get a free digital ticket along with it as well. Yeah. Um, but if you didn't go, so maybe someone, Tashina, maybe you guys can confirm the digital ticket is still available for purchase, right? Uh, I'm not sure if it's available to purchase or not. I mean, it, it goes to the 31st, so it may be available to purchase through the 31st. So if, if you have not had a chance, I mean, um, maybe someone or we can confirm at some point, but it's so well worth it. Like I mentioned, Dana and I didn't get a chance to go to all of the classes that I even put on my, our schedule. Um, and so the digital ticket has been life-saving and we didn't realize how much good information that we just would not have been able to physically get all of the time. It's really worth it. Um, but let's open the call up. So if anyone else got a chance to attend uh, Heather Brooks' class on crafting your story, like feel free to share your thoughts now. Uh, and if you didn't get a chance, maybe you got a chance to watch the replay or just what, what is it that you would like to reiterate about that topic? That maybe you so I went to the class and I, it was a different one than was on the replay. So I did the re-listen to the replay. And so I think um, for me, the most important thing I got out of it is putting more emotion into my story. And she, I mean, when I listened to her story, I teared up. And when I listened to the replay, I st still teared up. And um, like Jen mentioned, she said, the way that you worded it, Jen, was that um, you need to put a little pain in it. But she actually said, you want to open a wound sore, stick your finger in it. And move like she said, you want to make people feel pain. <laughs> so your story is supposed yeah. to have joy yeah. and pain. And mm -hmm. that's how you connect with people. So make them feel connected don't be different be a human that loves humans um and then janari mentioned like the whole part of the how your story is supposed to be so the the history the problem plane is where you get the connection your turning point and casting the vision and that at the end the casting of the vision you should be saying now that i have young living this so whatever your problem was your casting of the vision it's connecting to how Young Living has released that pain point. And so if you made that connection with them where they were feeling your pain and now you said, now that I have Young Living, that pain is no longer gone, it makes it so much easier for them to see, okay, I need Young Living in my life as well. So um, for me, that's what I think I got out of it. She did definitely say about being professional, but she was very funny. She was very, very funny in her story. <laughs> despite being professional but I think with every pretty much every speaker that I heard at convention mentioned something about making sure that they they are a professional being a professional and getting rid of our perfectionism like she mentioned in the replay stop waiting to tell your story perfectly tell it over and over and you will craft that story as you're telling it it's on the job training so those were two things that pretty much every single speaker mentioned being professional and the way that you get to be professional is doing it over and over and over and over again. Okay. Yeah. Good points. I, I, I like, um, you know, practice doesn't make perfect, but it does make for consistency, right? You know, and that's the biggest thing. So if you're apprehensive at all about, you know, like, like, Jen, you mentioned um, that this was your first time and, you know, you're typically not comfortable with speaking in front of individuals. Like, how do you become more comfortable? Like, you, you have to do it, you know. And you might never get over that feeling of it not being comfortable. It might get a little easier with time, but you still might feel, you know, butterflies in your stomach, but you're going to get better at it. Um, so so thank you for sharing that, um, Tashina. How about anyone else on the call? Any, anybody else that would like to share uh, either on watching the replay itself or on that topic uh, about their story. I really liked that point that Tashina br brought out about um, 
getting rid of like that feeling of needing to be perfect. Um, that's a big problem I have, and I know a lot of people have that. There's that I don't know enough, um, or like setting yourself up as why you should be the research. Like she talked about the way she used to tell her story, and that wasn't completely relatable and just a bit too sciencey. And um, so I appreciated both of those points is, and I go through that repeatedly with the perfectionism. Um, and I have to work on that over and over and over again, but that's been like a lifelong thing. I'm just glad I have an oil for that. <laughs> Yeah. So, and, and I totally, I, I totally get that. I am guilty of that as well. Like in my mind, I feel like things have to sound perfect for people to, you know, like for it to move them to action or for them to believe it. But I mean, the reality of, of it is like Jared says all the time, like we have a great product, right? Um, we have one of the best business models and young living has something for every individual. So like when I think about, <clears throat> you know, when the point that she was making, and thank you for sharing that, Monica, about her story not necessarily resonating with people because it was very sciencey. And, you know, so we don't need to necessarily talk about the science of how everything works uh, with our, in our bodies because the reality is most people don't care, you know. Most people care, like, does it work? And if you think about, like, when, think back to when you first got involved with Young Living and the person who introduced you, most likely they didn't tell you anything about constituents um, or what was it that we talked about last week about the testing, Monica? She's muted. I, I, I can't remember. I, and I told myself I was going to try to remember it. Yeah. It, chirality. I, I would never talk about that in an intro class ever. Yeah. I yeah. mean, unless there was like a doctor or a scientist, you know, like if it was that sort of audience, I, I might, but not for, you know, an intro class. I, you know, when I started, that would have been like, well, that's really cool, you know, right over the head. Yeah. And, and so to that point, because I totally forgot the name of that test within a week's period. And I'm not saying that it's not important, but the average person, they don't care about the science, especially when they're first being introduced. And um, we'll get to this a little bit, I think, when we get to Adam Green's um, class. But when Adam Green was talking about a lot of people, like the how, like a lot of people don't care about the how because that information is, is available. You know, they can look that, that up themselves. Like if they want to know about the quality and the purity of Young Living's products, that's available on the website. That's available on the Internet. Like a lot of people care about the why. Like why did you even start, you know, looking into natural health and wellness? Why did you look into Young Living um, more specifically? And what has it done for your family? So that's something we really want to keep in mind. Keep it simple. You know, if you have to tell a 30 second, a two minute or a five to 10 minute story at different points, what's going to help you to tell that story consistently so that it reaches and resonates with individuals is keeping it simple. So thank you for sharing uh, that, Monica. Anyone else on the call have anything they would like to share? Be quiet for one second. Hello? We can hear you. Go ahead, Julie. I just, I want to say, like Tashina mentioned, every single one of these speakers that we listen to all start their, their speaking engagements or whatever with their story and they have them so highly crafted now because they're professional they've been doing these for years now but that's not I mean, we will get there but that's what we need to be working on and so i just was amazed that every story adam green has a, a great story uh von harding has her own story every single one of those speakers has a great story and even von harding was she practiced you have to practice the story over and over and over. And yes, that means in front of classes, but that also means in front of your mirror, over and over, tweaking the story to get it, to, you know, crafted so that we have the the joy and the sadness and just enough to pull people in to our stories and our lives, so that when we give them the answer, 
you know, they're following right in, just like we were for her class. I mean, I was crying in her class. I was laughing in her class. And in the end, I would have bought anything from that woman. So it, it was just, they work on those stories and really craft them to make them that way. Every one of those people that are professional do that. And so that's, you know, it's just, we all saw it. I know it. So that's what we need to work on. This is a great call. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Julie. Um, like, are you telling? Are you a snitch or something? Are you ratting on someone? Like, your face is blackened out. <laughs> All you need is the voice changer now, right? <laughs> I have my um, grandkids here, so I'm trying to do between them getting the ice cream and... <laughs> You know, the TV video keeps going out, and they're all looking at me. It's like I'm trying. I'm sorry. I just. And yeah. then I saw the man go into the back room. I'm sorry. No, the lighting here is terrible, so I just. Oh, figured. no, no, no. I'm just messing with you. But that's um, a great point, Julie. Um, <laughs> one of the other things that Heather mentioned was like using your team to practice your story on. So, like she said, when they would do some of their team um, meetups or gatherings or classes or whatever, like they would practice. Um, on each other so going forward like that's that's a really good idea for those who are maybe timid or you know have been kind of sitting in the background all this time um, when we are doing our team classes and team meetups that are going to be happening starting next or starting this month in July this those are going to be great opportunities you know show up to those and interact with other team members and so we can get practice um, because even those who don't feel like maybe they're strong presenters or strong closers, uh, Heather also mentioned that, you know, telling your story, that's part of your close, right? So if you feel like you're not good in that area, um, I'm not necessarily the person that will sit and practice in front of the mirror, but I might sit and pr practice with somebody else. So that's a great way to, to kind of have a barometer of how you're doing is to have that positive feedback um, with other team members. So. That was a great suggestion as well. I, I really did like that. Um, how about anyone else? Anyone else have anything else that they would like to share? No, it's just me. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to admit I didn't listen to the replay yet. Um, it's one of the most important ones I think that someone can actually um, learn from and grow from because I think that that's where everything starts. People want to know your why and, you know, how you got there and your story and, and true. And it's all about relating to people and, and how you can help them. So I really look forward to um, watching that replay. And I think these Zoom calls are really important just to discuss the different points that everybody derives from, from that um, topic because everybody takes something different away from it. So I really appreciate everyone's input on it. And I can't wait to uh, to replay it so I can learn from it as well. So I gotta apologize then for spoilers for you, Melissa. <laughs> but but thank you for those sentiments. And I mean, you're absolutely right. And so something like this, uh, especially for someone like you, Melissa, who's just getting started, um, your story is actually pretty amazing, uh, especially when it comes to like how you wound up at convention. That's a great one to use. I don't know if, if you would like to regale us with a little bit of that. Um, and and not, not to put you on the spot, if you would like to, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. But I, I just find your story very interesting. Yeah, basically it was just, um, you know, him and Han about, you know, I really think these young, young living oils really work. And, you know, I can feel myself. I know that there's a big difference there. And, um, I've always had an interest in natural health and, um, you know, different natural approaches to health. And um, so I um, got my personal kit under Monica about a year ago. It'll be a year in July. And uh, yeah, it's actually July 1st today. So yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and so this month, yeah, it's been a year. And <laughs> thanks, Monica. Thanks so much. And um I just, I knew that I had to go to a convention because I needed to grow, I needed to learn, I needed to smell all the oils, I needed to be there with my team, I needed to meet the rest of my team that could, you know, really be my arms and legs and really support me. I needed support because I'm all the way up here in Canada, so 
Um, it was something that, you know, I said to my husband, I'm really thinking, I'm praying, what should I do? Should I do this? And it was just a couple days before, and I had already gotten my ticket uh, to go to convention, and I booked the trip, and I luckily found uh, Tashina to uh, room with, and, and uh, you know, I just jumped in. I went for it. So um, little by little, I'm getting there, and I know it's been a busy past couple two weeks but uh i did start to download all those replays off the digital ticket and uh you know i've been sharing with my mom and sharing a bit more with um one of the girls at the hall there today and uh yeah i was telling her today she's um from the philippines and i was telling her how young living was going to be opening in the philippines so uh it's interesting because she just actually lost her job so anyway there's all kinds of opportunities out there so i'm very excited to share and uh you know, it can open up the doors to spending more time um, in service or, you know, whatever you might, uh, whatever your your thing is. So, yeah, I really look forward to uh, to uh, growing with Young Living. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I got to meet all you guys and uh, and we can grow together. So, so Melissa, one thing that's, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, that's interesting about your convention story. And for those who are listening or on this call, who um, maybe they're hesitating about getting their ticket because they don't know how their travel plans are going to work out. Like Melissa, like what happened with your travel plans, like headed to convention? Well, I, um, I had somewhere to stay, but I, uh, I didn't get back to someone very quickly. And so I, um, I just reached out online and I said, does anybody have somewhere, you know, got an extra bed, extra chair, anything, I'll sleep wherever, you know. So um, Tashina actually uh, was in a similar kind of circumstance and um, I was able to tag along with her. So that was great. But um, one of the main things too, I was really uh, concerned about was the fact that I've never traveled in an airplane in an airport alone before and this was you know from Nova Scotia all the way to Utah so I was really um quite you know quite nervous quite anxious about it but uh so I've smelt valor before and uh I thought well let's give this a go <laughs> so I um I put it on the night before um you know night before I was going to get ready for my my plane ride and uh Boy, I valored up every time I thought of it, and uh, you know, thieves, thieves it up and valor it up and and stress away, and away you go. So I just uh, you know looked for some direction at the airport and just kept going from one airport to another. So it was uh, Halifax to Newark, Newark to Houston, Houston to Utah. So um, yeah, it was it was quite an adventure and an adventure on the way back as well, but. Uh, was able to change some of my work shifts around and work things so that I was able to get to convention. So, and the reason I asked you about that, Melissa, is because when you told me um, what it took and why you decided to come to convention, like, think about how much your story might resonate with a person who's like, hey, I want to go to convention, but I'm not really sure how I'm going to work everything out. Like, mm -hmm. when I talked to you, you told me, like, you literally had just found a place to stay, like, while you were like at the airport or something or on the way like and I asked you I'm like why like how did you like why did you travel all the way from Nova Scotia to Utah and this is a person like a, a you're a new distributor you know so you were like I needed I knew I needed to come and I needed to meet people I needed to learn more about the product and like I knew this is where I needed to be so your why was a lot stronger than your how because you yeah. still didn't know how it was going to work out right Mm -hmm. You knew your your why was that big that um, you just knew you needed to, to get to convention. And, you know, we got to spend some time together, um, you know, throughout that whole vacation. And, and I know that you probably really enjoyed that experience. And so that really is a testament to how powerful your story can be. So, like, yeah. I would use that, like, use that in your story, like, when you're telling people about your starting and living, because you never know, like, it's you know, convention for next year, um, tickets are still on sale. I, I think the price just went up on them, but they can still get them cheaper. And so for a person that's maybe sitting on the fence, your story is an excellent story on just get your ticket and figure it out later. Oh, yeah, definitely. I would uh, definitely just 
jump in, just do it. I know for me in Canada here, we don't have all the products that the States has, but in order for me to learn about the products that Young Living has, I had to jump out of my comfort zone and I had to make the leap and, and I wanted to go see the lavender farm. So it was really important for me to actually physically be there and experience all these things so that I could actually say, yes, I know what this smells like. I looked at this product. I went to the lavender farm, to the distillery. You know, all these things are really important. I think education in general is really important about um, the products as well. So, but like you said, um, if you focus on the emotion and why people need them, you know, they're not so concerned about what's it, what is it made out of, how does that scientifically work, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it was, it was great. I would definitely, no regrets whatsoever. Well, thank you for sharing that, Melissa. And like I, like, again, I apologize if I put you on the spot, but I just thought oh, you no. were so, so thank you for sharing that with everyone on the call. No problem. Um, does anyone else have anything they would like to add um, on that topic as well um, before we get into promotions for July? Before we close out, I just want to like kind of share a practical and what I think is kind of like a practical application of all this. Um, everybody knows I signed up somebody while we were there, right? And so basically I had an opportunity to do that 30 second, you know, speech to someone but I, I wanted to point out, too, that like the first year that I went there, I didn't sign anybody up, but I interacted with people from, you know, in the store and stuff like that. And the second year I went there, I didn't sign anybody up. But I, I heard Shannon say before, oh, I signed people up in the airport. I signed people up here. And even in the whole trip that I was there, the first person I was with, in the lift w vehicle with, I didn't even exchange information with them. The second person, I handed a flyer. The third person, I kind of did a one-on-one -on -one with him. Like I, I rolled some stress away on him and I went through the thing and I exchanged numbers with him. The fourth person I exchanged number with and the fifth person I actually signed up. The sixth person I also exchanged information with. So literally it was me telling my 30 second story over and over again over a three day period that allowed me to sign somebody up. And it literally is making that person feel important and connected because I didn't do a full one-on-one -on -one with the person that signed up. They had some knowledge about it. Um, he heard me tell Melissa that I had a new person that was signed up as a customer. I have to help them understand the value of the kit. That told him in his head I was a trustworthy person. That is the reason why he, he signed up with me. Like I was able to connect. We were able to build trust. He had the information he was willing to sign up with me with the 30 second story. So again, like Julie stated, practice, 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 practice and build relationships. And that is how you get things done. Continue to tell your story, continue to practice and you will get better. And it, it doesn't have anything to do with, with Heather Brock being amazing. It doesn't have anything with me being amazing. It's really practicing your story and connecting with people. And that gets you the success and the results. Couldn't have said it better myself. Very good, Shashina. Thank you for sharing that. Um, well, let's let's move into um, events going on in July because it looks like July is going to be a very very busy month, which is going to be good for those looking to keep momentum coming off of convention. Um, so, before I read off the schedule, like just think very quickly what it would take for you to hit your next goal um, in July and think how bad you want that goal. And then as I read off some of these um, events that we have planned, think about, can I support this? And does it help me in reaching that goal? So for granted, we do have people on the call who are not here in the local area, but if you stay in the Metro Detroit area and you're really trying to grow, um, these are some of the events that we'll be doing that can really help assist you with that. So starting Tuesday, July 10th, seven o'clock, that is, a, uh, like I said, Tuesday, um, we are doing a lifestyle intro to Young Living class. So this is um, for those who are currently enrolled. This is for members as well as guests. I encourage um, many to bring guests as possible because this class is really, um, it is the Vital 180 class, but we're really gonna stress the importance of why a person needs to understand 
that they need to make changes in their lifestyle if they want to feel um, feel better and live above the wellness line. So we might touch on some product, but there is an educational process that we want to get across to people uh, going forward who are enrolling, and we want them to understand the lifestyle, like what a young living lifestyle looks like. So we'll be doing that class on Tuesday, uh, July 10th. It's going to be at the Rusty Bucket in Bloomfield Hills. So if you are within the area, try to support that. Um, Saturday, July 14th is the Live Your Passion Rally. So check the Young Living website. I know Shannon Hudson is doing uh, a rally here in, well, not necessarily the Metro Detroit area, but in Michigan. That's on the 14th. So check for your local area to see uh, where events are available and what time. I, I know that we're looking into, for those um, who are close by, we're going to try and host something here. Well, I'll, I'll try and host something here at the house because Dana will be out of town in North Carolina doing a passion rally for our team down there. So if you guys have people that you want to plug in um, to that rally in North Carolina, it'll be in the Durham, Raleigh area. Um, so if people are within um, a reasonable distance, um, you can go ahead and plug them in. We do have the Eventbrite uh, event up. Uh, so just let me know. Okay. I'm, I'm typing at the same time. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so keep that in mind. And then we also have um, Sunday, July 22nd, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Savvy Spa Party. So that's going to be at Pure Relaxation Massage and Spa, uh, which is in Waterford, 2850 Dixie Highway, Suite 200. And all of this information will be posted online, too, as well as in the group. Um, Tuesday, July 24th, again, another uh, team training class. This one I titled, I've tried one of those things before and it didn't work, the truth about working a home-based business. So we're going to get into uh, a lot of the pitfalls that befall people, especially when they first get started with network marketing uh, and how to overcome them. Once again, that's going to be at the Rusty Bucket in Bloomfield Hills. Uh, we are looking to try to transition to Southfield for those who um, that might be a little closer in the month of August. Um, but those two classes or those two uh, workshops will be in July. And then so far for August, we have Tuesday, August 7th. Uh, at 7 p.m. Tell me about more about those oil things. That's the intro to EOs. So that's the intro to essential oils class. And then Tuesday, August 21st, 7 o'clock, the power of help five. So we're going to get into um, why that's so important. The help five initiative that Young Living has started to roll out. So plug those into your calendars by all means. If you can support those, remember that um, even if you feel like you may not necessarily uh, resonate with that event or need that event, the event still needs you. Um, though individuals who are coming for the first time, they need to see that Young Living is all about community and that there are more individuals than the person who invited them uh, who are like-minded and that they know that they'll be um, among you know other individuals and they have that support. So uh, even if you're not able to get a guest who is able to attend, please still attend um, because the meeting and the event still needs you. Um, is there any other events that anyone wants to promo for their area? I, I know I did Metro Detroit, but we have people from different parts uh, out there. So anybody else? Mommy, can you come help me right now? So um, this coming Wednesday, uh, if you have any people who want uh, to attend a live Instagram class, so we're going to do Wednesday probably – 730 um, Eastern Standard Time if anyone wants to plug into that <clears throat> but a lot of people have already responded that they will catch the replay but those are only going to stay up for 24 hours and um, I, I'm gonna do several of those to see how they look on video before I post something to the Instagram channel because if all of you have noticed um there's now the igtv option where you can actually have your own basically you know television channel via um instagram so that's kind of an interesting tool and it stays up and people can scroll through all of your 
programs. So you can, but I'm not ready to, yeah, maybe I need to get past that. The perfectionism thing is, is popping out there. But, but anyway. why? Just post it. I, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to do Wednesdays first. For anyone, if you have people who are available, and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll point them back in your direction. Monica, do you have a YouTube channel? I do not yet. Do you, do you do Instagram with your phone? I do. After you do an Instagram live, just save it to your phone. That's how I get mine on my YouTube channel. So that it's the easier. I'm, I fight with getting it off of Facebook. So it's right before you go to share it at the right hand corner, you have a save option. It'll uh -huh. save it to your phone. So then you have that as a video that you can send off your phone. You won't be able to send it via text message because I think it's too big, which is why I download it to YouTube. But you should be able to send it via email. So you should be able to have a record of it. So it's there for more than 24 hours. So try to save it to your phone. I just wanted to unmute myself and say that um, it was rather last minute that Amber decided to extend her loop all the way up to Michigan en route to North Carolina. <laughs> and so we're really excited to have her here this Friday. Um, and I wanted to invite all of you guys around the call and everybody that watches the replay and everybody from our team to come over for a team barbecue. I think that um, I know it's last minute, but hey, blues work really great with last minute and we all love to have a party. So <laughs> I'm hoping that you guys can work it out in your schedule to come on over and um, we'll do at the beginning. Amber has been doing a lot of social media um, training for herself and she wants to share some of the things that she's learned. Yeah, so the amazing. first uh, 45 minutes or so, she'll discuss that. And if you could get here early enough for that, um, that would be awesome. And then we'll just do some burgers and dogs and bring a dish to pass. Okay. All righty. And then this uh, Tuesday for any person on your team that speaks Spanish, I am doing from the Young Living website, the, the um, thieves class. So everything about toxic free living. So if you have anywhere, some, I mean, our leaders, we have hundreds of people on our team. If you have anyone else, on the team that speaks Spanish that's not plugging in the classes, you can plug them into that. And then any of the other people out of state, if you guys would like to join us for any class on Facebook or online, just let us know. Like we have no desire to make it seem like Metro Detroit wants to take over the world or that we're in control of the team. Just let us know if there's a Vital 180 class that you wanna do and you want another host or two, we are here for you because we wanna make sure that there's a Facebook class once a month as well so that everyone has something to plug into and no one feels left out. So just let us know. I had a quick question there regarding that. Um, Anthony and Dana, just wondering those um, groups, those meetings that you mentioned um, about the Vital 180 and you listed a, a few different ones, different topics that were, sounded really interesting. Just wondering if there's any way to um, record those or for me to join in somehow or um, if there's any options like that. That is a good question. Um, the Vital 180 one that we're doing for the first one is available online. Okay. Um, I will look into that because if I can tie you in, you know, via Zoom or Skype or something like that, maybe we'll work that out uh, beforehand. But yeah, we'll definitely look at trying to make that happen, okay? Perfect, thank you. Well, one more class I guess I should say is going on right now is um, you guys were talking about more Facebook classes and hey, Metro Detroit does totally want to take over the world to Sheena. <laughs> but from a Young Living standpoint, Anybody can tap into it if they'd like. I know a lot of you guys are already leaders in your own right and probably experts in the compensation plan. It could teach it no problem. But if any of your people on your team can't do it, yes, I am laying in the bunk bed with my 
baby girl. In case you're wondering, I am on the top bunk. <laughs> but anyways, I just wanted to invite you all to join in for that as well. I'm out of the little booklets. I'd only ordered 20, but I was really hoping them to go to people just getting started, the stars and such. So um, you could easily follow along as long as you've got the income disclosure statement and the compensation plan flyer as well. And so I, I hope you guys can bring some of your newbies on there. We have several people that are just product lovers that have joined in and it's a great opportunity for them to learn um, how when they share their products, they could be rewarded because we should all be re re rewarded for our referrals. And, um, and for those that have been around for a while, it's, it's an opportunity for you to fine tune your skills, especially when we're talking about uh, generation bonuses and um, the bonuses you earn on your leaders and such as that. So it gives us a lot of motivation to reach those higher ranks as well. All right, sounds like a plan. Um, okay, well, I don't wanna stretch the call out longer than, and, and hold everyone longer than I need to. Uh, but thank you everyone for being on this evening. Hopefully uh, you were able to gain something that you can put into use or practice this week. Uh, keep those events in, in mind. And I look forward to seeing everybody on next week's call. I was going to try to pull up the schedule to see what it was, but uh, if I can do it really quickly. All right. Um, so next week, Sunday the 8th, uh, Crown Diamond Panel answers to the questions that they ask. I'm not going to read all of these off, but that'll be the topic for uh, for next week. So if you can't, uh, it doesn't say. If you can, uh, tune in next week, and we look forward to seeing everybody then. Till then, everybody take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you all. Bye. Bye from Canada. Bye. Bye, guys.